Today we talked with band members of Toaster Ghost. We chatted about influences, when they all got into music, what brought them together, and explored their favorite songs off their new album, Electric Breakfast. You can find more conversations on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy, and he's Brent, and this is Lacrosse Local. Uh, my name is Corey Miner. I'm the drummer of Toaster Ghost. Um, I was born and raised mostly in uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. I lived in Madison for a few years. I got into music because of my, my father's love of music. Growing up, he listened to tons of different genres of music, and it was always a way for us to bond when we were, you know, cleaning the house or just doing whatever around the house. There was always music playing. There was a time where my parents had a dinner party, and when they would have dinner parties, they'd let me and my brother stay up a little later than normal. One of my dad's good friends, uh, Jeff Cozy, who's a local uh, musician, he saw me like pounding around on some stuff while a song was on, and him and my dad were like, hey, you're going to be a drummer. So that like lodged itself into my head, and when the opportunity presented itself for middle school band, when people were choosing instruments, you know, most of the kids wanted to play the drums and they were trying to get people out of out of percussion and like trying to get clarinet players and saxophone players and i was just having none of it i told them i'm a drummer my dad and his friend told me when i was a when i was little that i was a drummer i haven't played the drums but i'm a drummer so that's what i'm gonna do and it kind of it stuck my name is jeff i play guitar left-handed I always wanted to be in a band like Toaster Ghost. It's taken a long time. I first started playing probably when I was about 12 years old. It's all because of um, my brother's record collections. I'd stare at these albums and I'd say to myself, there's weird people out there and I want to be like them. <laughs> Heard the guitar on them and thought, that's something I would like to do, make those kind of sounds. So my brother was playing guitar at the time. And when he wasn't playing his right-handed guitar, I would grab the right-handed guitar and play it upside down. And that's how I learned how to play for a while and kind of get interested in music, like the Beatles and Donovan was a big deal. And anything kind of psychedelic pop, that was like, in the early 70s, probably. I guess this band, Toaster Ghost, we kind of, for some reason, I, I think it's just all four of us like all different kinds of music, but when we blend it together, it kind of has that feel. Reminds me of stuff I listened to as a kid. So my name is Jerry Miller, and I play bass for Toaster Ghost. I was born in Los Angeles, California, though I've lived here pretty much my whole life. In high school, I met some guys, I would later find out, played music. They said, hey, you should be, you should join our band. And I sort of called their bluff and said, I don't play anything, but if you get me an instrument, I'll learn how to play it. They actually came up with an instrument for me. They borrowed somebody else's bass. Then it lived at my house for like, I don't know, six months or something like that. And so then I had no excuse. I had to like learn how to play this thing. So I kind of did. So my name is Christian Sven. I was born in Galesville, Wisconsin. I grew up with music in the house quite a bit. My mom, who's been a piano teacher for, got to be close to 25 years now, had music in one form or the other available at the house, like all the time. You know, going to the store or anywhere we would go as a kid, my dad would always have the oldies station on. So I got into the Beatles and Bowie and, the turtles and some of that other stuff, but it just kind of, you know, it piqued my interest enough to want to keep listening to more of it. You know, as I grew up and was playing in the concert band and stuff like that, I eventually got into playing trumpet a little bit. And then I played in the jazz band. And I think it was my junior year of high school, our director handed us a jazz band arrangement of Radiohead's Paranoid Android. And I looked at it and I'm like, what the heck? Who would name a song this? Like, it doesn't sound like a cool song. It doesn't look cool. This sounds complicated. But then we started playing it. I couldn't stop making this face, which <laughs> this is all audio. It's my eyes are coming out of my skull right now. Amazed that this kind of music existed. 
So, of course, I went home and I listened to OK Computer. I listened to the bands. I listened to all the early Radiohead stuff. And that just, it blew my mind because I never had heard that kind of stuff before. You know, everybody listens to Creep and whatnot. But, and then I started looking for other bands like the Pixies and all these bands of that era that were, you know, into that sound. And before I knew it, I was just, I was hooked. And then I, you know, went to college, played in a couple of bands there, you know, like classic rock cover bands, that kind of stuff was working at the guitar shop here in lacrosse kind of got hooked back on track with some of the more unique bands out there and that's kind of how we got to here so speaking of that how did all of you connect i mean what was the origin of this band coming together a little bit after i had started working at the guitar shop i initially started working back in the shipping area and that's where jeff is so we got to talking and, and sharing our music interests and Eventually, we kind of had formed a band of our own doing mostly recording stuff. You know, it was just us two and doing experimental kind of lo-fi stuff. We had a lot of fun with that. And we had talked about for a while wanting to incorporate, you know, that into a live aspect. We, we knew Corey um, because he worked over at the drum shop that was connected to the guitar shop. And he was, you know, one, one of the first guys we thought of when it came to drums. Jerry, I think Jeff had known him a little better than I did, but uh, he was a, a customer of the shop and I had gotten to know him fairly well. We knew he was really good and uh, he would be a good fit. And we thought it'd be cool if we could just jam and, and feel it out and see what happens. On your new album, uh, Electric Breakfast, you have some spacey songs like things like Understellar and... You know, Zero Charisma, which reminds me of bands like Built to Spill, VCR Teeth, which is, you know, reminds me of some kind of like English singer songwriters, badly drawn boy elements to it. Where do your influences come from? As far as the sound of the band goes, I guess the guys who write the songs um, are the ones who have the best answer of, you know, where the, well, and, and from Christian's point of view, like the, the actual production and the mixing and stuff of everything. Me, as a drummer, my influences come from classic rock staples like, you know, Led Zeppelin and The Who and stuff like that. And then I got into David Bowie and The Beatles and all that stuff. Had my phases of, I loved like the band Korn and I got into new metal, rap metal stuff. And throughout high school, I was really into hip hop. But I kind of try to take pieces of all that, I guess. There is a lot of overlap like if there was like a, a Venn diagram of influences, there is a lot of overlap. You know, some bands, you, you can't be surprised by that. Like who's never heard of the Beatles? It's interesting how even in a town the size of Lacrosse, that four people that didn't grow up together, that kind of pick and choose from their influences and say, this all works together. You know, 70s glam and proto-punk, just classic rock stuff all these, these various influences that distilled together work so well. You mentioned some English stuff. I sometimes think about the kinks when I hear us. Um, not in obvious ways necessarily, but I think that's a touchstone band. Yeah, we, t we tend to have a pretty common vocabulary. Like if somebody's coming up with a part and they're trying to explain to somebody else in the band what to play, we very rarely stump each other with, you know, bringing up a reference of some kind. Right. We're like, we're like, we know, we're like, oh, I know what you mean now. That actually reminds me, just a really quick side note, when it comes to creating stuff like that. And you mentioned Understellar. We actually wrote that song kind of from the ground up, starting with the drums. And we didn't really know what we were going to turn it into. We all kind of talked about it and I said hey Corey you know just here's the tempo I'm thinking here's a couple of songs for reference the Beatles Tomorrow Never Knows and like Radiohead's the National Anthem something in that kind of droney jam vibe and uh, basically I just let the the tape roll for about five minutes and uh, we kept everything that he played which is kind of reverse engineering how I typically write songs and how songs are probably typically written i guess yeah when we play it you always want want to kind of sound unique and something maybe somebody hasn't heard before you know all the band 
mash together that we like. And I think we kind of sound like pavement too a little bit. Which songs each of you are you currently kind of digging off the new album? Christian was talking about the song Understellar and kind of how we constructed that. And because of how that one kind of came together and how we perform it live too, because there really isn't necessarily a set structure to the song. It just kind of like, there's a few different parts and we kind of just communicate with each other and like cue the transitions within the song. That one's holds a place in my heart. I really like how it turned out. I wasn't sure, you know, I wasn't confident in starting with just a drum part and it, you know, the stuff that these guys did on it turned out really cool. So the song VCR Teeth, I just can't say enough how happy I am that it made it onto the album. very like early version it's you know the, the germ of that song i'm like there is such potential in this yeah i'm just so happy to see it become what it is my son plays bells on the recording at the end of the song so i mean you know as a dad how can you not be a little excited about that i think my favorite song on the album would probably have to be spaceship secrets just mm-hmm. because it's it's kind of up tempo i guess a little more rocking It still doesn't hold back on the weird noises. It takes all of the stuff that we like and incorporates it at full force. I don't know, it's just a lot of fun to play it. And our buddy Hugh from Australia sang on that, so that's a bonus special thing on that. That's right. He sang on VCR Teeth and Spaceship Secrets. So I know we're all kind of dealing with COVID-19. What's next for you guys? You talked a little bit about Get Playing Again, but is there anything coming down the line that you could share? We've been, you know, piecing this thing together and we haven't had the opportunity to play since it's been kind of completed. That's usually the order of operations there is you finish the album and then you go play the album for people. (laughs) I guess whenever we have the opportunities to do stuff like that. I, you know, I think we tend to be a pretty thoughtful group of guys. So we understood the situation kind of when it first reared its head and we're all, you know, bummed kind of on the timing of it all. We had at least, did we, we had at least one gig scheduled, right? Before all the stuff started, if not more than one. I was just kind of assuming that after we got that first one out of the way, we'd just keep, you know, plugging away. And first of all, we're gonna have to knock the rust off. We, we were on a, a set practicing schedule we practiced you know every every tuesday night we practiced it was a thing that i'm sure these guys would agree that i look forward to every week it's going to be i think you know knocking off the ring rust and and getting back in there whenever that may be where can people find out more about toaster ghost so we are on Bandcamp and instagram and facebook at toaster ghost band I don't know what the status on it is, but we're hoping to have our, our tunes on Spotify at some point, too. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you would like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Locals. Subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We thank you for it. <laughs>